Hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. Today's snapshot is 14W07A. Prepare yourself for a lot of new things. There is tons of new features added in this snapshot. First of all we're going to start off with these iron trapdoors which look absolutely lovely. Now these work the way you would expect them to. You can't right click on them like iron doors but you can the wooden ones and when you power them with redstone you can open and close them which is a very nice addition. I think this is going to be better for aesthetics than practical uses but it's still very good. So anyway let's go into F5 and I'll show you me holding this gold ingot in my hand. Blaze rods have been changed so now when you hold them they look like a weapon like that, like a sword would. So previously it would have rendered like a item in your hand. Now another change we need to change the time to night time because repeaters no longer give off light updates. So if we stand on top of this you can see that that 0 and 1 is going from the light update of the clock over there uh, but the repeater itself isn't providing any light and it has just started raining which is perfect because they have finally fixed the weather clear rule. So previously if you were to type in a whole bunch of 9's here it would just reset the weather without inputting that number value but now when we do that it's not going to rain for the amount of time that we have specified there. So let's set it back to day and move on to the next thing. So this command block right here is going to give us a command block. If we place it down on here you can see it's got a message. Now if we middle click this and hold down control then the block that we're going to be given has the MBT data of that command block. So it's going to store the information for the message it was displaying. Now dispensers can now <laughs> place command blocks down and they also place ones with stored MBT data so when we place this down it's going to have that message and the redstone clock here is making it power which is a very cool feature. Now this next one is the ability to target players based on what way they are facing. So we have RYM and the Y stands for the first number that you'll see. If you look at facing south towards positive Z there are two numbers at the end of that. The first one is Y which is the one we're going to be targeting and the second one is X which I will show you in a moment. So this command right here is specifying the minimum number first of all, which is 0 and the maximum which will be 90. So it's going to target between 0 all the way to 90 like that. So if we face in this direction and activate the command block you can see Asuma, you are facing southwest. If we face any other direction when we press it, it's not going to do anything. And then I've got another one over here where it's pointing at the negative numbers. Although it says southwest, that's because I forgot to change that. Um, if we face in this direction, which isn't southwest, but you can see it works just the same way. And then when we face this way, it doesn't. So the next one is going to target the X value. So when we're looking at a number that's greater than 65, it's going to give us the message you are looking down. So at the moment, if we have a look at the F3 screen, on the second number on the facing bit, it says 18.7. So when we press that button, nothing happens. If we go up close to it and look down, it's now 80 which is greater than 65 and when we press that it gives us the message. So I forgot to point out the significance of this command block right here. It now has a new tag which is block entity and that allows you to store the command information in there. So you can see that gave us one that already had the command on it which is a new feature. So this next new feature is the ability to display certain objectives on a scoreboard to a specific team. So if we go and join the red team, then we are able to see the amount of blue team that we have killed on the right hand side. And we can only see that scoreboard when we're in the red team. So then if I join the blue team, we'll be able to see the amount of red that we've killed. And again, only when you're in the blue team can you see that. Then there is another feature that has been added here as well. If I press F5, you can see that there is nothing above my head but when we join a team it actually displays our name as well and this goes for the E screen as well for the inventory you can see my name is appearing above my little character there that could actually be a bug and then when I'm not on a team it isn't there but let's have a look at the command for this so you type in scoreboard objective set display and then you specify the sidebar with the team and then the team name and I think these are fixed values as well because when you press tab it shows you a list of them but after that you set the objective which was called kill red so if we just go back to that and press tab you can see here a whole list of uh, different team names so there's been another change to the tail raw command you can now display the score of an objective as the output 
Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you this because executing this command at the moment crashes the game, which is something they'll probably fix with a second snapshot release. But this is what it looks like. The tail wall command, as you can see, you can specify the text, Asuma has killed, and then you can call up the objective and the score of that player. So the objective is kill red, the player is Asuma, and it's going to display the score, so it will tell you how many I have. So what it would say if we were to execute it is Asuma has killed 10 because that's my score as you can see there on the right hand side of the screen. So these next two features I am very excited for. We have a new command first of all. This is test for blocks. Now test for block already existed. Now you can test for multiple amounts of blocks. So first of all we have two sets of coordinates. They are going to be either side of a cubic region that we are going to define. So one of them will be over there and then one of them is up there in the sky a little bit so we target all of the blocks here and then the third set of coordinates we are going to specify where the first block of the region we want to compare is so that's going to be the one that faces the northwest direction so it's this block down here is where it's going to start and so if we press the button here you can see it's going to give us an output because both of the regions are the same so if we add a block or we were to destroy a block like that then you can see it tests the two regions and it doesn't give us an output because it's different. Now we can also add something on the end of this which is masked and if we do that it means that it's going to ignore changes to air blocks. So at the moment they're the same, if we remove a block it doesn't give us an output. However if we add a block into an air block then you can see it will still give us an output. So this second one is a change to the test for command. You can now target a player's inventory and a specific slot as well. So we're targeting slot 100. Now the B right there is important. You should always put that after specifying a slot number. But 100 is the boots and we're going to target E's for his leather boots. Now you can also add MBT data here to specify whether the boots had an enchantment as well. So you can detect a specific item in the inventory if it has enchantments, if it has the right MBT data, whereas previously the only way you could detect an item if it was the only one that player had in their inventory. So we'll give him the signal. <laughs> He's going to take off his boots and you can see there's no output and then when he puts them back on, press this, then we get the output. Okay, this next command is a very exciting and interesting one. It is called execute and it allows you to execute another command and target a entity. So we're going to target ease, we're going to play catch ease which is going to be a very easy game because it is going to use the fill command to fill in glass around him. So uh, let's do that. <laughs> there you go, we've trapped him so it executed that command at the entity which was specified here because we put in his name. Now this next one we can also do it with other commands like summon for example. So this is just another demonstration. If we place down some little old chickens then we're going to summon arrows directly where they are and those arrows are going to have fire as well so when we do this boom they all get set on fire they run around and uh, then we get some cooked chicken so there is a new feature in the scoreboards to control the visibility of the name tag that appears above the player so this is it right here scoreboards teams options red name tag visibility so we can set that to always that means we will always see anyone who is on the red teams uh, name tag. We can also set it to never so we will never see that and then we can set it to hide for other teams so if we're on a different team we won't be able to see the name tag like this. See I'm now on the blue team and I can't see his name tag. We can also set it to hide for own team so that means when I'm on his team I won't be able to see his name tag. So we all know that now when we trade with villagers we get XP for doing that. There's also a MBT tag to disable this if you don't want them giving XP. So let's just trade with this guy. There you go, we get a bunch of XP. You can disable that. Unfortunately we don't know what the tag is yet but there is one. Um, so you'll be able to disable that in a custom map or something like that. Now this next one, when you use a damage value of minus one it means that you can target the items that have the same enchantments or whatever the MBT data is of that item. So if we go and give ourselves a whole bunch of iron swords, you can see these ones all have fire aspect and they have different damage values. So when we clear our inventory of that item with that enchantment, that's the only one that it's going to remove. So it's removed the first sword, the second, the third, but it's not going to remove the one without the enchantment. So yet again, some more powerful and interesting changes to the command blocks. We have some new operations that we can use. These are plus, minus, multiply, divide and percent and all of those have a equals after them which means we take value A and value B and when we add them together they then become value A. So down in this 
command block we have the plus equals here and this is value A and this is value B so total score plus score will then equal the new total score and we're going to target all players on the map for their score so me and Ease have 12 points between us that means when we press this we add another 12 points to the total score now here is the same operation except we're using the minus so minus equals means we can take away those 12 points each time we use this so there are three other features here as well we can now set the score of an offline player we can also test for that offline player as well and also if we put a hashtag in front of the player's name it means it's not going to display on the scoreboard on the side so you can see there there's only ease and assumer and offline player is not going to appear on there and we can also test for that offline player score as well so when we press this you can see uh, that the comparator is on and so the lamp is on as well so another few changes that you should know about if you press F3 and then look at the bottom when we look over a block it says looking at and then it gives you the coordinates of the block that you are looking at which is very useful when you want to input that kind of information into a command block or something like that now another small change we have a stone brick monster egg this is a stone bricks with silver fish inside when you break this in creative mode it's no longer going to spawn a silver fish which is a nice little change now there is another bug that has been exploited for making obsidian generators when lava is flowing over redstone it could turn the redstone into obsidian that bug has been fixed and one last change there is now going to be world sided resource packs which means when you download a world like a map to play it can have a resource pack built into it so that is it for this week's snapshot video if you have enjoyed it please do remember to leave a like it will always be appreciated and a big thanks to my buddy Ease for setting up all of this command block stuff to show you all of the new features we also worked on a mini game together if you didn't see that yesterday that was when it was released it's called Diamond Defender it's a heck of a lot of fun there's a link on the screen and in the description box to that but that is it for this snapshot video as always thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you next time